Hi everyone, thank you very much for stopping by and returning to the Old World. Today, let's look at how we manage our powers of shame. And I've got three top tips around how to approach this. But before we look into those tips, let's just think a little bit about the background. I think it's something that's really easy to do when you start a new project, is that initial rush of enthusiasm to go out and buy as much stuff as you think you might need, maybe, down the line, including a number of different optional purchases, rather than just your core basics. This is something I think which is even more true if it's a new game, either a new game coming out, Warhammer the Old World is probably a good example of this, or just a new game to you. So if you're just getting into bolt action, for example, and you don't have models already, you may rush out and buy everything you need for a complete force. Now, I do think if you want to use Games Workshop models for Games Workshop games, the current logistical problems that we hear so much about, they really play into this being a problem. So even if you're thinking you might need something down the line, you may feel even for models that aren't limited, so they're going to be part of regular stocking, you may feel that you need to rush out and buy them as soon as they become available, purely because you know know when you'll be able to get your hands on them in the future. So we over-purchase. Real life then gets in the way, be it stuff with the family, DIY, housework, normal work, things like that. And this initial rush of enthusiasm starts to turn. So we now see this big pile of things that we've bought and start to feel a little bit overwhelmed by it. And our project stalls. So three top tips here on how I think we can help ourselves to manage the pile of shame and keep our projects on track. My first tip is buy a unit at a time. Now, we've just covered as part of the background times when this might not be appropriate. So if you're building a new force or purely you can get a model now, but you don't know if you'd be able to get it again in the future as and when you need it. But if possible, I think buying a unit at a time, assembling it, painting it, basing it, putting it to one side, and then picking up your next unit is a really useful mechanic. It stops the pile of grey growing because you're only buying what you know you can paint. And if you want a new thing, it actually, I think, encourages progress because you know you've got to finish the thing on your table before you can go out and buy another thing. I suppose it's a bit like a grown-up version of saying to a child you can't eat your pudding unless you eat your peas. And on top of this I think this approach gives a steady accumulation of small wins and hobby successes. You're always getting that steady trickle of the dopamine effect of yeah I finished that it's done I'm pleased with the way it's been painted or whatever. I can now move on to the next thing I can tick something off as done. What's the second tip? Well, this comes actually through a good friend of mine, Emil, who makes the suggestion, treat undercoating as part of assembly. So in the UK, and probably many other places as well, the weather can play a really big part on whether we can take models outside and spray them with undercoat. Not everyone has the facilities to undercoat indoors, with their chosen methodology and many people will take stuff outside to give them a quick spray can't really do that if it's constantly raining or even in fact if it's so windy that models are at risk of flying away so when you're assembling something treating something as only assembled when it's sprayed up and getting into a regular pattern of whenever you get the opportunity to do so just go and undercoat some stuff is a really good way of fighting the grey. How so? Well, if you're the kind of person that has limited painting time and they just really want to paint what they enjoy painting, you may feel, oh, I really fancy getting a character done, or actually, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling good, I'm going to tackle my cavalry today. What this means is by having everything that's assembled also sprayed, means you can just pick up a model and go to town really and start painting it up you don't have to root through your stuff in order to find something that's primed 
and you don't have to then pick up a load of models, prime them, wait for them to primer to dry, wait for the, the smell to go away, that kind of thing. And by which point maybe your hobby time's disappeared. Maybe you've just lost that enthusiasm which you had at the initial point. Because you can't just pick up a model and paint it. So don't make the priming part of your painting narrative. Make it part of the assembly narrative. And that may well help you just be able to pick up models as and when you want to paint them and crack on. Once again, thank you very much for the meal to that one. My third tip is really about keeping things in perspective. What do you need to paint? If you've got a big pile of things that you want to paint or feel you should be painting, what do you actually need? What models do you need to get ready to actually play a game? And if you've bought lots of things so you can have options going forward, you don't need all those options right now. You just want to get something on the tabletop. And that pile of 100 models when you think about it this way, can actually become something like a pile of, say, 30 models, which is a lot more manageable. To further aid with this, I think it would be useful to, if you've got space, to take those essential models and just put them to one side. So they're not part of the stack of boxes of other things that you've got, or a box of loose models, whatever it may be. You've got a much smaller, more manageable pile of things in order to tackle. And as you do so, that number will go down as a proportion much quicker than your overall pile. So it reduces the visual impact of here is a big stack of stuff. This is overwhelming. It looks more manageable and can help play into your confidence and encouragement, really, that you are making a dent in what you need to do. And you are driving forward towards project completion. I think keeping in perspective also helps deal with distractions. So from a personal perspective, as regular viewers of the channel will know, I'm taking part in a project of many gamers looking at Warhammer the Old World, and I'm collecting an Empire Army. However, this month I have also signed up for a Warhammer 40,000 event uh, for 1,500 points. And obviously the things that I want to take in my army list that includes things that aren't painted. So this has put delays in what I'm able to do for Warhammer the Old World because I've suddenly got a deadline that's come up to get Warhammer 40k stuff painted. And as I've sort of faffed about, I've very much got into the position of thinking, oh, blimey, I've now got this to do and I've got that to do and I'm not making enough headway, etc., etc. So actually taking stock, just taking that step back and going, OK, so to get to that 2000 point army stage for Warhammer the old world, I've got all these different army lists floating around that I want to paint stuff for. If I do these few things, I can get to 2000 points and then I can start buying other things, painting other things to give me options. This reduces, the, really that has reduced that burden of saying I've got all of the things and has allowed me also then to work into okay, how much time have I got available to paint? What do I need to paint to think about for my tournament list? What am I going to take and what absolutely needs painting? And I've got that down now to about 11 models just by putting stuff in perspective. So I've got, I think, in order to tick off my 1500 point list, which has to be done by mid-April, and to get to my 2000 point list, which will involve having to buy some extra models, I've probably got in the region of 40 to 50 models. And that feels a lot more manageable than thinking I've potentially got the best part of 100 models because I've got various lists in my head and I want to paint stuff for all of them. And it's really helped me then re come to terms with what I'm actually trying to tackle and feeling that it's something I can get to grips with in a timely manner. So they are my three top tips for managing your pile of shame. Buying a unit one at a time, undercoating as part of assembly, and keeping a clear perspective about what actually needs painting in order to drive your project forward. 
Now, I'm sure many of you will also have your own tips and tricks for dealing with a pile of shame and really keeping projects on track. If you do and you feel it's something that's worth sharing with the community, do please let me know by putting something in the comments down below. It'll be really interesting to see what other tips and tricks are out there, and there may well be things I want to incorporate into my own approach, for example, because we can all learn from each other. Once again, thank you very much for listening. If you've liked this video and others like it, do consider subscribing. It's the best way of helping a small channel such as this one. I am returned to the old world. Have a great day.